Has this sort of thing ever happened to you? Let's say you're a freelance web developer and you're walking down the street with your computer, of course, and you're coding on your client's code base, of course, but then you trip on a branch and not a Git branch, I mean a real life branch. Your computer flies out of your hand, it falls on the ground, smashes into a million pieces and you're screwed. Now you have to go get a new laptop, you have to add all your dot files, your configurations, your libraries, the frameworks, the packages, everything, and get reset up with your client's code base. You just lost hours, maybe even days of setup time. But what if I told you you weren't screwed and there's a better way. With a program called Coder, you can self-host containerized applications and environments in your machine so you can spin up new workspaces like no problem whatsoever. Seriously, check this out. I have a Dockerized Rails environment that let's just say was set up for my client's code base. If I open this environment, I can access everything I need from here. I can open up VS Code if I want to and just be thrust right into the environment for my client, no problems whatsoever, or I can even open the terminal and I can configure this so that my dot files for NeoVim, by the way, are all set up. So they're cloned, they're all ready to go. I have all of my libraries, my languages, my packages, everything necessary to just spin up a new workspace and start work immediately again. I don't have to lose any time. And the best part is you can host this on your own for free. It's amazing. It's like a little hack if you're a freelance web developer. I'll explain a little bit more about how it works and how to set up for yourself and why I personally think it's a really interesting thing. So let's get into it. So Coder is an interesting platform that enables developers to manage and deploy like kind of containerized programming environments. And I'm sure some of you might have just heard that sentence and said, okay, well, that doesn't apply to me. Couldn't I just roll my own Docker files or Ansible configs or Terraform configurations and just do all this myself? And to answer that, I would say, yeah, but kinda. Let me explain a little bit. First of all, if you check out Coder's website, you might see that it's geared a lot more towards enterprise level people or maybe like professional DevOps people or professional infrastructure people that wanna implement this in their company. But personally, I think there's a really great use case for Coder, specifically with self-hosting, that I think works perfectly for freelance web developers and just regular hackers like you and me. So let me show you how this works. It's actually really cool. Now, the thing about Coder that I really like, especially if you're just hosting this yourself is it gives you a platform to manage your containerized environments. So we can call this like your coder instance locally, right? And now in your coder UI, you have all this information about your, your templates and like workspaces that you're deploying, and you're given the ability to manage and deploy new workspaces, set things up, tear things down. It's pretty awesome. And the way it works is basically like this. You have your coder instance that's hosted locally. And within your coder instance, you have the ability to use use uh, new templates and a template could be anything like Docker or if you're trying to deploy something on the cloud, you can use AWS or Azure or any other cloud service you can think of. It's all available in Coder. But personally for me, I like to host this locally on a server that I have at home. So I like to use Docker. And then from all these templates, you can use them as kind of a starting off point to then create what's called workspaces. And your workspace is actually where you get work done. It's like a little micro environment that has all the libraries and packages you might need. In our instance, we're gonna do this in Docker, but as I said before, you could host this on the cloud somewhere and access it from anywhere in the world. And so in your workspace, you have access to things like VS Code. You can also access interesting stuff from like JetBrains IDEs. And also what I find is really interesting is you can configure this with dot files so that you can actually run NeoVim with all of your configurations already set. So if you're a NeoVim person, like me, you don't have to use VS Code or JetBrains. You can still use NeoVim. It's amazing. Just by SSHing into the machine that you create, you have NeoVim. It's awesome. So now let's install and host an instance of our Coder platform locally, and then I can show you how it spin up a whole new workspace for this Ruby on Rails example that I gave above, where I tripped and dropped my computer and my client's code base is all ruined now. Let's show how easy this is. So without even signing up for an account, you can try Coder right away. Just go to the installation section and you can follow this honestly pretty easy guide. Just copy this command from the web browser and paste it in your terminal and we just run a shell script that installs Coder. And there you go. Now you can see right here, all we have to do is run Coder server and we should have our web interface ready for us. Now if we click on this URL, 
URL, we're brought to our coder server. Now I already created a workspace. We're gonna do another one from scratch, but this is essentially what you see after you authenticate. Now again, if we go back to this extremely detailed diagram we just drew, I go over something called templates. And templates are kind of the jumping off point for creating a new containerized workspace encoder. So let me show this off. We want to go to templates and we want to create a new template first. Now I'm going to start with a starter template because that's just the easiest way to do it. I don't have a crazy use case. I just want to containerize my workspaces and be able to spin them up whenever I need to because I don't want to lose any work on any clients that I have as a freelance web developer. Now, of course, you have all of these cool things. You have AWS hosting, you have Azure, you have GCP, and there's a lot of cool stuff that you can use here. But for me, since I'm just running this locally on a server that I'm going to use at home, I'm going to start with a Docker container. This is the most straightforward thing we can do. Now, this is a template that I'm going to make for my client specifically. I want to make sure I have the right Ruby version, the right NeoVim configuration, all that good stuff. So I'm going to say it's for my web client. And it's a Docker container for Ruby on Rails. Web clients, Rails template. And then it's as simple as that. If we hit create template here, what's gonna happen is Coder generates a template for a Docker file, a Terraform file. It makes sure that Docker is actually running in the server that we are running Coder from, all that good stuff. And what you're left with is a very simple Docker file and a Terraform file to get things going. Now, I'm kind of a noob when it comes to Docker, but I can look at this file right now and have a really good idea of what we're doing here. So let me edit this so that this template works for this client. Now, I know I'm going to need Ruby and Installed, so I'm just gonna install Ruby. The latest version is fine for me. And I'm also going to want NeoVim installed. Also, I mean, shucks, I'm kind of a Tmux nerd, so I'm gonna make sure we have Tmux installed as well. And that should be about it for all the packages I want Docker to install for me. So now on its own, this workspace is gonna be great for this client, but I wanna get a little more out of it because I'm a NeoVim guy and I wanna make sure that my configurations and everything are set up so that I can recreate them super easily. And how do you do that? Well, for Coder, there's there's a great section on dot files. Now the dot files here are actually pretty straightforward. Essentially there's a helper function in the coder CLI called dot files that allows you to import dot files from a GitHub repository. All you have to do is create something called an install.sh script, a bash script, and your dot files will be cloned from that repository and your install.sh script will be run. Here's a list of potential defaults that they look for with install.sh scripts. Any of these things would do, but it's Essentially, as long as your install.sh script will copy files over or create sim links, your configurations will be good to go. Now, I have a pretty in-depth NeoVim configuration. Also, if you're interested in NeoVim configurations, please check out this channel. I have a whole entire course on it. But to convert this to dot files that would work with Coder, I merely created an install.sh script. And all it does is create sim links for all the dot files in this repository. And then down here, we really just check to see if the directory of config nvim doesn't exist exist. If it doesn't exist, create the directory and then symlink our nvim directory to the directory under config in this new coder workspace. It's honestly pretty straightforward. It's only took me a few minutes to do. So now to implement actually cloning and running this install.sh script in our Terraform file that coder provides, once again, I'm a noob with Docker. I am less than a noob with Terraform. I'm not a platform engineer. I'm not a DevOps person, but this is just straightforward enough to understand. In this Terraform file, what we want to do is run coder.files with the dash Y prompt. And we merely want to just pass the URL of our GitHub repository that contains all of our dot files with the install.sh script. Now that repository for me is right here. So I just copy and paste this URL into our Terraform file. And that should be all you need to have your dot file set up on your new workspace. Now we just click build so that we make sure there's no syntax errors and our Terraform file and Docker file build correctly. Again, as a platform, this is fantastic. And then we just publish our new change to this template. Now this template, we can name it something like, I don't know, uh, Rails Docker NeoVim version one, okay? And we click on publish. Now we just go back to our templates tab in our managed coder platform environment running on our server locally. And we can see right here, this is the template that we were just working on, web clients Rails template. Our current version is Rails Docker NeoVim version one, and we're good to go. So again, back in our super in-depth diagram here, we have our templates and from our templates, we wanna run workspaces that can actually run VS Code, JetBrains, NeoVim with your DAW files, whatever you want. So 
let's go back to our template and click on create workspace. We want to call this workspace um, Chris dropped computer and we click create. Now what's going to happen is coder is going to use that DAW file. It's going to use Terraform and it's going to create a new environment that's available through VS code, through SSH, through JetBrains plugins to anyone. And it has all of the configuration all set up for you. Now just wait, it starts up a whole little containerized environment. Okay. And now we have a running workspace that was just created. I don't know if you saw the logs there, but if we see them, we can see that we actually have some noise around creating our dot files, running our install.sh script and creating some sim links. Awesome. Now, anyone who has this workspace can just click code server and they're dropped into a VS code instance in this workspace. So if you have Ruby on Rails installed, you have the GitHub URL of your clients cloned in this environment, you're good to go. But this is all you need. Now for me, I need a little bit more than VS code. So I can just click on this terminal button. It'll open a new window. And if I type NeoVim, my dot files are all brought over. Lazy is installing all of my packages. Of course, Swagger Preview failed. I think it's because I didn't install Node on this system, but that's okay. But all of my stuff is here. This is everything I need to get going in a NeoVim environment on a containerized workspace that I just started up from scratch. And so this brings me to the main point of this video and why I think Coder as a platform is so interesting. Now, throughout most of my career, I worked as what you would call a freelance web developer, or I would consider myself more of a consultant. I would have many clients and many clients required different code bases, different libraries, different packages, all that stuff. Now I could just make Docker files on my local machine and spin up a new Docker instance whenever I needed to work from one client to another, and that would have been fine. But what happens if my computer breaks? Well, I'd be kind of screwed. I would have to reinstall everything on a new laptop, get everything working again, and it would just take me forever. And there's a bit of a concept here that I really like. It's called the thin client. Essentially what this means is that it's a philosophy where the client that you use doesn't actually do your computing. Your computing is done elsewhere. Let's say it's a server that you host locally at home or a digital ocean droplet or an AWS instance, whatever it may be, you don't really care what computer you're using. It could be a really crappy PC. It could be a crappy Linux machine. It doesn't really matter. Your computation happens elsewhere. So in the thin client philosophy, coder fits in perfectly. I don't really have to care about what computer I'm using. I can just spin up a new instance on this really beefy local server that I have and I'm good to go. I can just start writing code, no problem. And another piece I like about this is a lot of times I would work with really big companies and I have a lot of contacts where I would use subcontractors with me to work on large projects. So now let's say I'm working on this Rails project and I want to add a subcontractor like my friend Robert, who's a colleague of mine, to this project. Let's say he just we just signed him on, he's ready to go. All I have to do is create a new workspace for Robert. We'll call it Robert Rails, whatever. We can create this workspace and then my colleague, Robert, who's in a completely different location than me, can have the same exact setup as me. All he needs is to be able to log in to Coder. I have to make sure that this instance is available to the outside world using ngrok or whatever else. Maybe I'm actually hosting this on DigitalOcean. However that works, I have a whole new workspace that's geared towards this client. All I have to do is click one button and then Robert, all he has to do is go into Coder and click on Run VS Code. He's a VS Code guy, but don't hold that against them. So now Robert, all he needs to do is click on this one button and he can just start writing code immediately for this client with me. There's no setup. There's no walkthroughs. There's no docs or readmes that you have to look through. I've done all that work for him. I just spin up a new workspace and he's good to go. So I just thought this was a really interesting piece of technology and I wanted to share it with you guys. Now for the sake of transparency, Coder is sponsoring this video, but we aren't sharing sponsors that we don't actually believe are good products. What I mean by that is I see Coder as being a really integral tool that I will use in my day-to-day -day life. And that's why I want to share it with you guys. If I didn't see it that way, I wouldn't have made this video. So check Coder out. It is pretty interesting and I like it a lot. And hey, thanks nerds.